Welcome back to our Cowboys season of change special. We continue the countdown of the greatest moments of the Cowboys season at number nine, the momentum changing moment that led to Dallas first win of the season. Dallas trailed the rival Redskins 23 to 20. It looked like Washington was about to put the game away when the Cowboys defense made a stand with a Sunday afternoon church service. Cousins back. They fall down in the end zone intercepted. Barry Church takes a knee. The Cowboys turn them back. I was able to step in front of it and get a, get a takeaway, which was huge for our team. The interception by Barry Church turned the game around. Dak Prescott led Dallas on a 10-play drive that was capped by former Redskin Alfred Morris' four-yard touchdown run. The Cowboys won 27-23 for their first win of the season. First of 11 in a row, Bill Jones with Randy White, Dave Campo, and Keith Russell. You know, last Sunday, the Cowboys spotted the Packers an early 18-point lead in the NFC Divisional Playoff at AT&T Stadium. But Dallas turned up the heat and rallied in the second half. Dak Prescott throwing three touchdown passes in the game, two of them to Des Bryant, and the rookies... Quarterback draw, two-point conversion, tied the game at 28 in the closing moments, but Aaron Rodgers had every answer down the stretch for Green Bay. A sensational throw and catch by tight end Jared Cook with just three seconds left, put the Packers in position for the game-winning field goal. Mason Crosby nailing his second field goal of over 50 yards as Green Bay moves on to the NFC title game against Atlanta, 34-31, leaving the Cowboys to wonder what might have been. I mean, it was a great game. Uh, all the way around. Just hates to be on the, the losing end, obviously. Uh, but uh, this is games that I dreamed of a little kid of playing in uh, and plan to play in many more of them. I'm just proud of the team, you know, just to see the guys that stepped up today and fought. We talk a lot about the word fight. Uh, fight's a really important word for us. Uh, it's the foundation of our entire program. It's fighting to be your best. And I told our team afterwards that these last three hours demonstrated who we are. We were who we are. I think you can feel good about it. You can get your eyes forward and get your shoulders back. And to see those guys come back and compete like that, uh, then I know we were very capable of, uh, if we could get uh, have won this game, we were capable of uh, doing a good job uh, uh, against, uh, in this case, Atlanta, and probably a good job in the Super Bowl. As a side note, the NFL has denied a report by former NFL GM Michael Lombardi that came out this week that the 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty called on Bryce Butler for being in the huddle should not have been called. Lombardi says NFL teams are being told it was a mistake, but NFL officiating czar Dean Blandino stands by the call. Coach, let's get on the big board and take a look at the last couple of Green Bay plays before their game-winning field goal Sunday. Well, normally, Bill, in a two-minute drill, you're going to try to get as much yardage as you can, what we call an intermediate out or a corner route, and get the ball out of bounds. So the Cowboys know that. So they're going to play underneath what we call five underneath man-to-man, -man, as you can see right here. And you can also see that Justin Durant is going to spy the quarterback and secondary contain because they know Rodgers loves to roll out in this situation, especially to his right. Now, as you see it going right here, the underneath guys are in trail man. Durant comes, forces a quick throw, and Byron Jones makes a great play, knocks the ball down to the outside. Now, on the critical play on third and 19, the Cowboys decided to play what we call a soft, too deep zone, with the underneath defenders playing fifths of the field underneath, and they're still going to secondary contain with Durant because they know Rodgers loves to roll out. Now, they probably thought he was going to roll to the right, but in the huddle, Rodgers told his guys, we're going left, and uncovered linemen pull out and help me out there because they're going to secondary contain. As we roll it right here, you're going to see Byron Jones and Carr, the two most important guys. Stop it right there. Perfect. Now, you see Durant forces him to bounce it outside a little bit more. In here, Carr has turned it into man-to-man, -man, and now he's running up with the vertical. Byron Jones now, with, the, with that situation, should be turning and looking across the formation for the next receiver who's cooked, and he doesn't. He keeps his eyes on the quarterback. Bingo. Big play. Great throw. Not that far off, but a super throw. 
And a super job by Coach showing us how it happened. Cowboys have 18 players who are set to become unrestricted free agents this offseason. On the offensive side of the ball, Terrence Williams, Bryce Butler, Lance Dunbar, Darren McFadden, Kellen Moore, Mark Sanchez, Ron Leary among them. Notable defensive free agents, Brandon Carr, Mo Claiborne, Barry Church, J.J. Wilcox. Daryl McLean, Jack Crawford, Justin Durant. It will be a busy offseason for Stephen Jones. You know, at the end of the day, I think we've been pretty transparent all year. Everybody knows that we've, uh, you know, compared to our offensive side of the ball, our defense doesn't have the resources, whether it's draft pick or salary cap room, committed to it that our offense has. And, uh, you know, that's certainly a priority in the offseason is to, uh, you know, try to upgrade our defensive side of the football. And, uh, you know, I'd say that's at the top of the list. Before we get into those free agents, Coach, uh, your telestrator of that final play, I know you got something you want to say about Brandon Carr there. Well, first of all, when I first saw the play, you know, with a soft zone, I thought it was Brandon Carr that should have sunk back right to the, the field goal range marker and sat there and would have been in good shape. But when I found out that they had told them to turn it into man-to-man, -to -man. it became uh, Byron's job to, to get the cross. All right, Brandon is a, a free agent this offseason, as is Mo Claiborne, as is Barry Church. you got three starters in the secondary. How big a, of a priority is to lock up some of those guys? Well, I think it's important. I, you know, there are some guys that you want to have on this ball club. I mean, there's no question. that The one thing about Brandon Carr, he's a steady player. You know, he's not going to make a lot of plays. The guy that I really would like to see them keep is, is Barry Church because I think he's the one playmaker they have back in the secondary. He's a guy that can go get the football, and I don't think they have enough of those guys right now. All right, uh, Randy, how about those defensive linemen? You get Terrell McLean, Jack Crawford, a couple of those free agents. Well, uh, you know, they've got to they've get some guys that can put pressure on the quarterback. you got to get some pass rushers. Now, in my opinion, in my opinion, <laughs> uh, you, get, you need a speed guy from the outside that, that, that's an impact player, and I think you need a big 340 pound bazooka guy that's mean that'll rip their heads off to push that pocket back. And if you get one of them, I think the pass rush changes. Well, he's not 340 pounds, but I would take the Manster. I think we ought to get the Manster back. I was back. just going to say that. <laughs> I was going to say, now look, you got a little eligibility left. Let's get out there and get this thing going. Yeah, get number 54. Oh, I'm 64. Yeah, I'm 64. No, 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 you're number 54. Get yeah. number 54. There you go. There you go. You, you know, go. I, I like Rod Marinelli's uh, theme of using a bunch of defensive linemen. But what I saw was a, a, a mismatch of just stuff on the field. I saw guys that were on the field not making plays all at the same time. So Jack Crawford is out, and here comes David Irving. Terrell McLean is in, and he's out. And here comes this guy, and Tyrone Crawford is playing defensive end when he's really a defensive tackle. I think they need a premier rusher. I don't think there's a substitute for that. You can run 10 guys out there and keep interchanging them, but you have to get somebody to the quarterback. Well, and they, and they worked hard. I mean, the guys that were in there, it was oh, not from lack good. of effort that, that they didn't get the pressure that we're talking about. These guys work and work very hard, but you can't coach speed. You got, you got to have speed, and you can't coach strength. They need one guy, I think, that, that really everybody's looking for. You know, back in the day, we had Haley, you know, and, and all of a sudden we became not just a bunch of guys playing hard, but all of a sudden Jeffcoat was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then Tolbert and then the secondary, you know, that guy makes everybody better. And we've got to find one of those guys. Yeah. They do have a good guy at weak side linebacker. This should have happened last month when uh, the uh, uh, original Pro Bowl team was announced. Sean Lee replaces Luke Keekley, who bows out with an injury. Sean Lee led the Cowboys with 174 tackles, including 12 tackles for loss. So Lee named the first team all pro team and now he's headed to the Pro Bowl for the second straight year. But Lee already focused on next season. Well, we have to have an unbelievable offseason to come back, and we have to earn it again. you got to start from, start from the bottom and, and work up. But, you know, next year if we get in this position, we got to understand how you, know, you don't get many shots, and you got to find a way to play four quarters defensively. Randy, you had a middle linebacker named Leroy Jordan, and Sean Lee reminds me a lot of Leroy. He does. He does. He's a, you know, a great person, a great guy, great, great team player. Uh, knows, the, knows the offense as well as the offensive players, can almost call the plays, 
When things go awry, he doesn't panic. You go to him, you look to him. He's got the advice. He's got the calming effect. Uh, you know, he's just a great football player, and I've always uh, liked him. And this year, he's had a year where he hasn't had the injuries to plague him, and he just had a fabulous year. And uh, you know, moving forward, he's going to be a, he's going to be a great player as long as he can play. I know this. I've watched him on on off days. You know, at the Star. And he's there from 8 o'clock in the morning until 6.30 at night watching tape. I mean, the guy is a, the guy's a winner. He, he knows what's happening on the other side of the ball. And the true mark in my mind is if you make the all-pro team, not the Pro Bowl team, the, the all-pro team, everybody recognizes within the league that you're one of the top guys, and he is certainly that. You know, Sean Lee uh, expressed to me in the offseason his commitment to staying healthy. He knows that Cowboys fans have been down on him for having injury after injury, and he stayed healthy this year. He was on that field for every game except for the Eagles game when they chose to sit him out. I think he just needs one other guy who brings that level of talent, that level of talent that he has to make that Cowboys defense just a little bit better. Maybe it's Jalen Smith. We'll have more on him coming up. We turn our attention to the rookie dynamic duo when our Cowboys season of change special continues as we go to break. A look at the opponents the Cowboys will face in 2017.